This presentation provides an overview of what municipalities in the Cataraqui Source Protection Area need to know about source water protection in the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan. This presentation is in two parts. The first section provides an overview of source water protection across Ontario, and more specifically in the Cataraqui Source Protection Area. The second section presents source protection implementation considerations for municipalities in the Cataraqui Source Protection Area. At the end of this presentation, you will be able to explain source water protection to coworkers in the general public, you will understand your municipality's responsibilities under the Clean Water Act, and you will know where to find additional resources to assist you as you begin to implement the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan in your municipality. Source water is the untreated water in lakes and rivers and in underground aquifers that people use for drinking water. Source water protection means protecting our sources of drinking water from contamination and overuse. Clean water is often considered to be an environmental issue, but it is also a public health and economic priority because people, businesses, and communities need clean water to survive. The contamination of the Walkerton drinking water supply in 2000 caused seven deaths and thousands to become ill. It was the catalyst for a public inquiry that led to 121 recommendations to better protect sources of drinking water, including source water protection. Protecting our drinking water is not a one-step process. This figure illustrates Ontario's multi-barrier approach to protecting municipal drinking water from source to tap. Source water protection is the first step, followed by effective water treatment, distribution, testing, and training before the water reaches your tap. By ensuring that proper protection is in place at each stage of this process, the likelihood of water contamination is reduced. Source water protection complements the efforts of drinking water treatment plant operators by eliminating or reducing sources of pollution in our lakes, rivers, and aquifers. It contributes to the health of humans and ecosystems. Protecting the sources of our drinking water is important to ensure that there is enough safe water for all of our uses, now and in the future. It is much easier to keep water clean than it is to try and clean it up afterwards. Sometimes it is impossible to remove the pollution either by site remediation or through treatment, and a different source of water needs to be used. The Clean Water Act is in place to protect existing and future sources of drinking water. It is a commitment from the Ontario government to ensure the sustainability of clean, safe drinking water for everyone in Ontario, and to implement the recommendations made following the Walkerton Inquiry. Under the Clean Water Act, 19 source protection areas or regions have been established in Ontario as shown on this map. The purple arrow points to the Cataraqui Source Protection Area where your municipality is located. Source protection plans apply to every area or region and aim to accomplish two main objectives. To protect existing and future drinking water sources in the source protection area and to ensure that for every area that has an activity that is or would be a significant drinking water threat, the activity never becomes a significant drinking water threat or, if the activity is already taking place when the source protection plan comes into effect, then the activity ceases to be a significant drinking water threat. Every source protection area or region has a source protection plan. The Clean Water Act established Conservation Authority jurisdictions as source protection areas. The Cataraqui Source Protection Area includes portions of three counties and all or part of 12 municipalities. The boundary is the same as that of the Cataraqui Region Conservation Authority, with the addition of the Township of Frontenac Islands. The Cataraqui Source Protection Plan was developed by a committee of 16 members, including a chair. Committee representation includes municipal, economic, and other public interest sectors, such as environmental organizations or cottagers and shoreline residents. Before developing the Source Protection Plan itself, the committee guided technical work, including an assessment report, to identify vulnerable areas around drinking water sources, as well as regionally sensitive groundwater areas and activities that could affect source water. 
extensive public consultation was completed at each stage of report and plan development with the aim of creating a locally viable plan to protect drinking water sources. The Cataraqui Source Protection Plan was approved by the Ontario Ministry of the Environment and Climate Change on November 26, 2014 and comes into effect on April 1, 2015. This map illustrates all of the vulnerable areas within the Cataract Resource Protection Area. The Source Protection Program focuses on drinking water systems that are owned by municipalities and provide drinking water for residential use. The 12 drinking water systems are Sandhurst Shores, A.L. Defoe, Bath, Fairfield and Amherstview, Point Pleasant and Kingston West, Kingston Central, Sydenham, Cana and Kingston Mills, James W. King and Gananoque, Lansdowne, Miller Manor and Mallory Town, and Brockville. Drinking water systems that rely on surface water sources are indicated by purple arrows, while groundwater sources are indicated by green arrows. About 80% of the Cataraqui Source Protection Area residents live in an area that is served by a municipal water system, which draws water from either surface or groundwater. Protection zones are mapped around these drinking water sources. For surface water, they are called intake protection zones, and for groundwater, they are called wellhead protection areas. The balance of the population relies on drinking water from private intakes or wells. You will notice that the majority of the Cataract Resource Protection Area is yellow or orange. These are the regionally sensitive groundwater areas, known as highly vulnerable aquifers and significant groundwater recharge areas, which account for more than 90% of the entire Cataract Resource Protection Area. The entire area is characterized by thin soils and fractured bedrock, so that any water and pollutants on the ground surface can easily soak in and potentially affect drinking water sources. The sensitive groundwater areas are not linked to any particular drinking water sources, but they are important for rural populations on private wells. The Cataraqui Source Protection Plan includes consideration of protection measures for these areas. A wellhead is the actual part of the well that sits above the ground. It is the exposed well casing and is commonly referred to as the stick-up. A wellhead protection area is an area around a municipal well that supplies water to a treatment plant. As per the Cataract Resource Protection Plan, actions must or should be taken in the wellhead protection area to protect the drinking water supply. Wellhead Protection Area A, or WUPA A, is a 100 meter radius around the well. Wellhead Protection Area B, or WUPA B, is an area where it takes water being drawn toward the well through the ground no less than two years to reach the well. Wellhead Protection Area C, or WUPA C, is an area of land where it takes water being drawn toward the well through the ground no less than five years to reach the well. Wellhead Protection Area D, or WUPA D, is an area of land where it takes water being drawn toward the well through the ground less than or equal to 25 years to reach the well. The vulnerability of each zone for every wellhead protection area was determined based on a number of factors that account for how easily the underlying aquifer could become contaminated from overlying activities. For instance, thin soil over fractured bedrock does not provide much natural protection, while a thick layer of clay does. The wellhead protection areas in the Cataract Resource Protection Area are generally vulnerable, since soils are relatively thin and permeable and the water table is high. Also, the zones closest to the well have the highest vulnerability, since there is less time for pollutants to break down and for cleanup efforts to be made before the water reaches the well. An intake protection zone is an area around a municipal intake pipe that supplies water to a treatment plant. As per the Cataract Resource Protection Plan, actions must or should be taken in the intake protection zone to protect the drinking water supply. Intake protection zone 1, or IPZ1, is a set distance from the end of the intake pipe located in the lake or river. Intake protection zone 2, or IPZ2, is an area of water that takes no less than two hours to travel to the intake pipe. The vulnerability of each area of every intake protection zone was determined based on a number of factors that account for how easily contamination could reach the intake pipe. 
For instance, an intake that is shallow and adjacent to land uses that could cause pollution is more vulnerable. Some of the intakes in the Cataraqui Source Protection Area are classified as more vulnerable than others. Although intake characteristics were taken into consideration during the establishment of vulnerability scores, a provincially mandated method was used to classify municipal intakes. According to this method of classification, drinking water systems that draw from Lake Ontario cannot be considered highly vulnerable, although they may have met the criteria, i.e. shallow and close to land uses of concern. For all intake protection zones, the zones closest to the intake pipe have the highest vulnerability since there is less time for pollutants to break down or dilute and for cleanup efforts to be made before the water reaches the intake pipe. Source protection is intended to ensure that activities don't pollute drinking water sources. In the Cataraqui Source Protection Area, people rely on surface water and groundwater sources for their drinking water supply, shown in yellow. Some chemicals are not removed from water, even with a water treatment system. In some cases, when the pollution cannot be cleaned up, the resulting contamination can ruin a water source forever, shown in red. It is much easier to keep water clean than it is to try and clean it up after it has been polluted. Protecting drinking water sources can also benefit tourism and recreation, as well as providing good fish and wildlife habitat, shown in green. All source protection plans are required to contain policies that address particular activities that pose a risk of polluting sources of drinking water. The Clean Water Act calls these activities drinking water threats.